But I'm now joined by the political commentator, Marina Perkis, who, as I understand it, Marina, you don't think the cultural wars really exist? Do you think they're essentially a, a right-wing... Oh, no, I, um, think, I think they exist, because people like you and your party in government, they desperately need them to exist, because what else are you going to win the next election on? So um, they're not coming from people who want to pull roads down or want to edit Raoul Dahl. Isn't mm. there a battle of ideas that is going on that sometimes get expressed in extreme form? So what I think has happened is it's a distraction technique. So don't get me wrong, I think any calls to rewrite Roald Dahl, for example, or to rename a, a street. By the way, the street renaming, if we go into that, it was called Black Boy Lane. You know, that was why they renamed the street. I think that's fair enough. If you had a street named, you know, White Trash, you might want to rename it. But I think what's happening here is you're drawing attention to these things that actually don't impact people's lives. And the reason you're doing that is because otherwise people might just focus on the real grievances in their life which are basically caused by your government. So what this government is saying to people is, you can only claim asylum in this country if you arrive here. We're basically, it's like a challenge. It's, we're incentivizing them. It's like if you need a life-saving operation at a hospital and the hospital says, we will not accept you, except if you break in. That's the way you'll get that operation. That's is, what this government's it, doing. I mean, it's very limited, Carol, what you can do in order to get in in a, in a safe way, isn't it? I mean, the UK resettlement well, there are safe it prioritises so, so can we just? Conflicts. So you just said they're safe routes. Carry on. Can you tell me what safe routes Carry are? Carry on. No, tell me. You said they're safe routes. No, so, I don't want to engage with you, Marina. And something you have to bear in mind is, again, the fact that they're not even revealing to you, like, so many of these schools, like, which schools are crumbling? You've got to bear in mind, 65% of Sunak's cabinet went to private school. Where do you think their children are going? If their kids were in these schools where there was a risk to life, and by the way, I've known about this. I tweeted about this, and I'm not in the government. I tweeted about this back in June because it was being, uh, the National Audit Office warned about it. How on earth is it that we have a government that the day before is sending out on Twitter asking people to fill in a questionnaire about how much of this rack, this concrete, is used in schools. They are so incompetent. If their children were in these schools, they wouldn't be doing this. I think the fact that Boris Johnson won one of the biggest Conservative majorities... Because he general... lied, Peter. Can we just establish that he'd say he voted... He said, he said that he was going to get Brexit done, he had an oven-ready deal, People believed him, and what happened? Uh, and we got Brexit down, and we delivered a great success in that. No, you didn't. Yeah, so, which is why we are, we're Sunak not in the why, European why Union. Why Rishi Sunak has had to now let, 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 still let, not let, Pete, let Peter finish. Playing checks. Let, let Peter finish. Well, look, if you're talking about Brexit, we're out of the European Union. Mm. We don't pay billions and billions of pounds each and every year to the European Union. We've ended the free movement of people. We make our own laws in our own country, judged by our own judges. And we have a free trade, free quota agreement with the European Union. Oh my God, that is delivering those, right, exactly what Boris Johnson promised. Every single one of those points I could pick apart. Yes, Go on, then try. We don't pay billions in, to the EU as part of our membership. We now hemorrhage billions, lost to the Treasury because re of lost output. We've That's ended freedom of true. movement. And your government is now having to roll back on this and grant visa here, left, right, and centre, because we can't. We ended the, the free. People cannot just walk into saying, this Peter? country. And so, I, what I suspect, what we've got with Suella Braverman is a cabinet minister who wants to take action to stop the boats is hemmed in in the cabinet which isn't with her. I don't think Rishi Sunak is genuinely committed to stopping the boats. He's just, you know, he just wants sorry, to throw Kate, money at the problem. Right, so I'm sorry. She does not want to stop the boats. If she genuinely wanted to stop the boats, she has a solution. It would be to open up more safe routes for the countries that we know people are genuinely fleeing. She has closed them down, which is why we have seen this massive uh, soar in the numbers of people getting into small boats. She has got no desire to stop them because it's part of this, the, the rhetoric, the narrative, this, this sort of, you know, this throwing of red meat to people who, who thrive off this cruelty. So that well, she's got no desire to. If she didn't yeah. really want to, she has it within her gift to do so. Uh, and also, she should be sacked, absolutely, for a number of reasons. But firstly, she should never have been in that position. Don't forget, she was responsible. She was sacked by Liz Truss, which is saying something, for repeated breaches of um, 
uh, she shared documents when she shouldn't have done. She was known as Leaky Sue. Repeatedly, she did this. This is a woman who is now in charge of her home security. But Sunak gave her the role. It was very obviously quid pro quo because Sunak needed Suella Bravman to galvanise the ERG, right? To be like, support this guy, get him into number 10, which happened, right? She's not fit for that job. Click here for Mog being a right twat.